So this is uh, the Jelly Bean Thor, uh, originally owned by Lou Sunderland, who was the guy who turned the T18 into the S18. First finished for uh, Rockford in 68, and then restored in 2019 by Dennis Sanders. Sunderland fell in love with the airplane in 63. 63 was the debut of the T-18, and this airplane got here in 68. So uh, it was one of the three sisters, there were three that were sort of built to alike, similar to each other. And about that time, uh, Lou Sunderland, the guy who built it, took over the Thorpe uh, newsletter, and so that, therefore the T-18 sort of became the S-18, and that's the significance of this aircraft. I think the, the biggest thing about this aircraft, I mean, we've all been around home builds and there's a lot of like trying to make the most with garage technology and what can I find at the hardware store, right? And what that ultimately does is lower the reliability of the aircraft. At the end of the day, I'm trying to take this thing to work. I need a reliable aircraft. The, the restoration was done by a man named Dennis Sanders, who's a famous Sea Fury builder. You'll see his aircraft over in the Warbirds area. And so when he restored it, he didn't restore it as a home built, he restored it as a, as a Warbird. So it's got very high quality switches and wiring and electrical, et cetera, it makes the airplane reliable, right? It's nice to see a, a classic home built that's sort of uh, uh, been modernized or, or brought up to date. And I think people are seeing that and excited. Again, Dennis Sanders put so much work into making this aircraft what it is today. And it's great for people to see that and be able to appreciate his hard work. So I work as a contract test pilot in the civilian commercial space. And I was hired to do the, uh, the flight test program on this aircraft. I fell in love with it. The guy who bought the airplane wasn't having much fun with the airplane or it was just sitting. And I had a bunch of contract work down in LA flying from Mojave. So I'm driving three hours every day. So instead of driving to work for three hours, I fly to work for 35 minutes and I get to fly a historical airplane every day. Everything I fly, I stay in the glide cone because the thing's always going to quit and try to kill me. Big thing about this airplane is it's very, very stable. We got two good old fashioned point magnetos. We got a drip carburetor. This thing's gonna not let me down, which means every morning when I walk out the airplane, hit the starter, it's gonna start. I'm gonna make it to work on time and I can focus on doing the risky stuff when I get there. So uh, being a flight test guy, I dork out on handling qualities. And this is very much an example of sort of Gen 1 or Gen 1 plus handling qualities in the home built world, right? So really light in pitch, real heavy in roll. Uh, so from a, being a flying guy, I enjoy flying and it's a little bit more challenging than it needs to be or than maybe an RV is to fly. But the biggest thing again is it's all about practicality. The thing starts when it needs to, doesn't burn a lot of gas. I and mean, if you look at the footprint, it's a small airplane. Uh, this is my 35th Oshkosh, probably one of like five or six airplanes I've debuted at Oshkosh. In my personal opinion, it's not an airplane uh, until it's been to Oshkosh. And I love being able to do that, be able to share something I'm passionate about in this particular uh, home-built aircraft with the, the, the crowd that most appreciates it, right? This is the home of home-built aviation. EAA is the center of it. And having the airplane here for that is a big deal for me.